Okay, we've been working on things here. Everything's all torn apart. The motor's out, the that's out, the tranny's back there, everything's, shelves are full. So, what we're gonna do is start doing the little things that I wanted to do. Um, I sold my valve covers and ICT brackets and truck coils, and what I got was Holly valve covers and LS3 coils. See how much cleaner and nicer that is? Well, the guy I bought them from tapped in there and it's very small, so these gotta go. And those are going to get sealed off and I gotta weld bungs on here somewhere. You know, I gotta see where I can fit a dash 10. I gotta weld them on both sides. Uh, you can see my coolant, my water pump looks a little different. Pulley's missing, top secret project right there. And my neck's missing, I cut that off. Remember that was a dash 20? I got this trick little piece off eBay. It was like, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks. But it's a dash 16 extension for there. Uh, it's nice, it's beveled. It says you can press this in and it'd be fine. I'm gonna weld mine. I'm in there, TIG welder. But this is a really, oh, this is a really nice trick piece. And um, this just, uh, you know, it's a nice tight fit. I'm gonna have to tap that in, but I'm, I gotta clean up this edge first before I weld it. We're going to do, I'm waiting on some fittings from Fragola. If you can see down here, my fuel regulator is now moved. It's down in there. And I'm waiting on some 90 degree fittings from Fagola. And what we're doing is gonna hardline it. I've been practicing with this bender that I bought. And um, we're gonna hardline that so it's much nicer. And I'm probably gonna hardline that one out the back and make a mount. So it'll be, you know, I'll have a connection somewhere. You know, I'm, I'll stand it up or whatever, and I could just hook up. I don't know, I haven't decided if that's the way we're gonna go with that, if we're gonna make this for the return fully out. All right, I had to do a significant amount of opening it up in here with my little uh, uh, deburring bit. Um, maybe it's a press fit. <laughs> you know, you put it in an actual press, but I don't know how you'll put that much tension on this without messing it up. Um, Mine fits and they're good. I don't care about it being pressed because I'm gonna weld the whole thing over now. So it's in there good. Clean it up. Frick, that was getting in here. <laughs> that was a pain in my dick, but it's on there. It's gonna be nice having that extension. Like I said, with a 90 to come out, it'll, it'll just work out better. I gotta reseal these. These were leaking a touch. And then this will be done, minus putting a pulley back on. I got these fittings in from Fragola. It's a uh, three quarter or whatever orb on one side, dash eight ORB, dash eight on the other. And this is for the, um, front of the fuel rails, and these are swivel, which is kind of nice, because then you can just screw it in and set it where you need it to be. But, um... Now I can make my return hard lines. Got some half-inch aluminum tubing, fuel line tubing. Um, it's cheap. It's like 20 bucks for 25 feet of this. Not expensive at all. The fittings add up, but it's still not terribly expensive. Uh, the same rigid flare tool that we used to do uh, brake lines goes all the way up to three quarter. So get to use it again.
Nice flare. Bought these off Amazon for like 30 bucks. They're alright so far. Ninety. <laughs> that looks really nice. Look how much better that looks. Yep, I like that a lot. I got to do for one for the other side. The problem is I'm gonna have to put a slight bend into it. It came out sweet, huh? Nice and hidden in there. It's gonna look really good when it's all back together. The regular is not hanging off one side. We're gonna change it up a little bit today. I am sick and tired of doing body work. Um, I'm just, I mean, I don't know what I can say. I'm just tired of it. Everything's a mess. Uh, so we are going to do a little bit of welding. I haven't turned on my TIG in two months, three months, but I'm gonna fire it up today and, and start getting some other things set that uh, need to get taken care of. Um, so it's not like I'm really going all plan and all this. This is stuff that needs to get done anyway, so if I'm gonna take a little break from all the monotony of the engine bay, might as well do this. Got an order in from my favorite buddy Mike Hennessy from Monkey Fab. Told you guys I love using him uh, for fabrication stuff and all sorts of other stuff. And what I got is a four inch aluminum V band with a quick release. Quick, I swear. <laughs> Some dash 16 weld fittings and a dash 12 fitting. And what that's, all these fittings are going to be for the radiator over there. And this is going to be for my new downpipe. This is actually going to protrude out of my bumper, you know, maybe half, three quarters of an inch. And the problem is that my bumper comes on and off, so I'm going to make it so this V band. I'm putting the V-band here so I can quickly just loosen this up, pop the quick release, take this off, take the bumper on and off. Yeah, is it a pain in the ass, but it how often I'm going to take the bumper off, you know, twice at the track. I'm not going to be pulling the bumper off at the track because there's really going to be no need for it. I'm not going to be tearing the motor or tranny out. Um, so this is loading, unloading the trailer, stuff like that. But I wanted the V-band there so I'll... I can actually protrude this out so it can look better and and I just dented my tip. That's alright. Uh, we're gonna get that all welded up and cleaned and then maybe this goes out to Dieter's custom finishing and gets a full polish on it. But let's put my phone on the phone charger it's not even plugged in. <laughs> a little practice first. Never hurt.
guys a cool little trick. So this is the radiator I, I my buddy gave me because he's not using it. Now I'm going to mount this on the back of the car. This is a Fox body size radiator. It's like twice as big as what I have in there. But I'm going to show you. So I cut off the factory hoses so I can mount my own. But let me show you a trick to get a piece of aluminum cut out for that. So plain old manila envelope, envelope folder here. I just laid over it, right? Get yourself a body hammer. I'm sure any hammer will work. But you do it. See the little circle it left? You pound it on it. Oh, you got an indent the other side. And then you can cut that out, transfer it over to your piece of metal. Sitting here going nuts looking for my porter pan. I think I loaned it to someone and, it, and it's buried over there because I haven't used this thing in shit, a while. Put it that way. Alright guys, we're all finished up with uh, welding up some things. Had to get away from that engine bay for a little bit. I'm over the body filler. I cleaned the whole garage out this weekend. Got everything clean. I'm just, it's too much crap at once. So, this is time, like I've shown you guys, it's time consuming. It's tedious. It's, it's a lot of work, so I'm just tired of that. Um, the new radiator is done. You can see... Dual dash 1016, dual dash 16 fittings on each side. Like the old one, I split it, made it a dual pass. I stuck a piece of aluminum in there and welded it all back shut so it's a dual pass. I closed up all the original. This is a 3 8 NPT bung that I'm going to put a pressure sensor in to monitor coolant pressure. Welded that one shut and I added the dash 12 back up here to go to my expansion tank which is in the trunk. The um, reason I'm doing this is for drag week. It's one serious upgrade. Let me go grab the radiator that was in there. You can see how much bigger the new one is than this one. These are both Griffin, three core radiators, universals. I got no problems with them. They're great radiators. But I didn't trust this one. 1100 miles on the highway pulling a trailer for drag week so we went with the much bigger radiator and I'm gonna put the dual contour fans on here which is about double the CFM as this fan can't wait to get this back in the car gotta make some mounting for it haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do that yet but we're gonna figure it out the only thing I haven't welded on here is some standoffs for the fan shroud and for mounting because I haven't figured that out yet well, we got this done, we got that water pump done, got everything. I felt good to weld aluminum, showed you my downpipe exit. I can't wait to actually build the whole downpipe. It's going to be super sweet to build. That's going to pretty much wrap this one up. It's, uh, it's moving along. You know, I may not, I'm, I'm jumping around again, which I don't like to do, but I, I kind of had to to keep my head sane about things. I want to get this painted soon. I got a guy who's going to paint it for me in a booth. I know it's not my mentality of in a garage DIY, but I showed you guys last time the painting of the bumper and everything. There's just some times you need to outsource if you want perfection. I mean, not even just perfection. He's a professional. He owns a body shop. It'll be done in a booth. The color match will be perfect. So it's going to go to him and get done and I'll probably have him paint the nose as well just not right now um, so I gotta get this all finished up so he can get it painted because once it's painted uh, get ready to stick the motor back in the next episodes will probably be finish cleaning up the ports on the cylinder heads getting those decked getting those assembled onto the motor I also have the Holly EFI to go over a uh, couple of things. It's it's just slowly working along and it's getting there. I'm getting excited. Get out in the garage, guys. Grab a cold drink. Grab a cold Corona. Work on your hot rod. Middle of January. Let's get these cars done for spring. Have a good night, guys.